Well, that's kind of too bright behind me and you can't see my face. Let me try it a different way. Hi, it's Redheaded Riding Hood here. Red for short. It's not worth part two. Sometimes we say it's not worth bothering about. In some ways, this is the most dangerous saying of all. We may know that there is some quite little thing wrong. We may know that some quite little mistake has been made. In either case, at the moment, it is quite easy to put it right, but we let it go. It's not worth bothering about. This is a way in which real trouble can grow and in which a really unmendable situation can arise. That is why a man can lose his health forever and perhaps his life. The continual lament of doctors is that people will not come to them in time when they feel the first little symptom of something wrong. They say, it's not worth bothering about. And by the time they decide to do something about it, so often there is nothing that can be done. There are many things which can be cured and mended if they are dealt with in time. Yeah, like cancer. You may say, for example, it is a parable of life about a small fault in a motor car. It's not worth bothering about. But the small fault will become a major breakdown and perhaps in the middle of a wilderness with the nearest garage miles away. If something is wrong, we should bother about it at once. Sometimes we say it's not worth the trouble. It may be that a job is not quite right and that something remains to be done. It may be that something is just sort short of perfection. It may be that someone suggests a way in which something can be improved. All such things take time and effort and we are apt to say it's not worth the trouble. Life would be very much better if people would stop consenting to push things through somehow and would take the extra trouble to go that extra mile to make them just exactly right. It is always worth the trouble to get something as perfectly done as we can do it. When we catch ourselves saying it's not worth, let us beware. That way, that way trouble and danger lie. Um, yeah, and just one little, <laughs> one little thing at the pool where I don't work anymore. <laughs> Otherwise I might not say this, but the chemicals being off and a manager not coming out, like I don't, I wasn't trained to do that. I mean, thankful that they never asked me to put any chems in or anything, but at one point, you know, it was off so much that, you know, um, I thought they maybe should come in and, and put some chemicals in or adjust something. But um, that was just one thing with why I um, quit my job. It was one of the issues. It wasn't just one issue. And it was also that I wasn't having time to write anymore and wasn't having time to YouTube anymore. And, and uh, that was another issue. There were several issues. <laughs> and I finally was like, I think that God wants me to quit my job now. And um, so I was reminded of that that part of it not that like god speaks to me in an audible voice i was reminded of that 
thing about like I feel like this is how I'm being led because this is happening and this is happening and this is happening and then I heard Joyce Meyer in a message um, and I heard her say this before about when God told her to quit her job and I was like wow that's interesting and it just it makes it, it better because I feel I feel badly and of course I have less money now which can be an anxiety but um, I'm gonna be okay because God always looks out for me and um, helps me out with things so I'm going live in a little bit and so I will see you there hopefully don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too don't forget to pray for red because red is praying for you <laughs>